Okay, see at the bottom how he's bottoming out and his knees are kind of shooting forward. He's getting a lot of pressure on his lower back. We're going to change that. Okay, it's not that your knee's going a little bit further forward or it's a bad thing. That's kind of a myth that your knee should never travel forward. That's a complete myth. A little bit of that's natural. <clears throat> but in Mark's case, and in my case, we're trying to keep our lower backs really healthy. So there's no need to go that deep. And when he goes that deep, it could be his hip flexors are tight. It could be a number of things. But he's getting he's pushing a little bit too much forward, a little too far forward. Yeah. He's, a little bit shallower. I want you to get. I want you to get past that point where your knees. You're talking about those. So I do want. I mean, the years. You're right on the money with that. Get past the point where that hurts. Yeah. But there's no need for this last part. What you There's no need for that. We're going to start off with safety bar squats. And the difference between this and a regular squat is pretty simple. It's just a little bit more quad. Um, but regardless of whether you're doing a safety squat, a camera bar squat, a regular squat, you do feel more cushion at the bottom from having your hamstrings pumped up. So it's just a little more quad stress using a safety bar. It's no better than a regular bar, it's just different. We alternate, we'll do a week with the safety squat bar. Um, then, a, then we'll, we'll come back, we'll do the regular bar. So this just happens to be the week that we follow on the safety squat bar. All right probably wondering why we're using a bumper plate. It's because we're going to use chains today and we'll get into that here in a minute. But the bumpers are going to move the weight out this way so the chain is sitting on the floor and not on the monolift. You don't want the chain, one chain sitting on the monolift here and the one chain not. You need to have them balanced. So that's why we're using these big bumper plates. Look, as we go out, the chain will hit the floor, okay? So that's in case you're wondering why we're using these lumber plates. That's just something to remember if you have if you have a machine like this or something where it's hard to keep the chain deep. Right now, as you can see, we're adding chains. The same principle that we talked about on the leg curl. They're gonna, the weight's getting heavier as you come up. So normally, where the weight gets easier, we're increasing the load, so maximum contractile force through the whole rep. Accommodating resistance. because it makes it easier. Look at a couple of the things here. My feet are turned out slightly, and I'm not I'm not locking out at the top. I'm keeping tension more on the outside of my quad by turning my feet out a little bit, and by not locking out, I'm just that, that's just continual tension. That's all that is. So feet a little bit wide, or toes turned out. I mean, don't lock out. Keep tension on the muscle. That's what you want. This is actually, I think this is a big thing for you, man. We gotta get your quads to be bigger. Because yeah. it's hard, it's hard as nails, but I think for you, 
all about a little bit different shape to the muscle now. Illusion, yeah. Because it's not like you can gain 10 pounds. You won't be able to make the weight class. Right, right. So, yeah. So this is a big one for Mark. This is quad sweep. It's also big for me too because I got a big wide ass waist. So I need a big quad sweep to offset my big blocky waist. Mark doesn't have a big blocky waist like me, but we need a little bit more quad sweep. So this is good for both of us. The toes out, continual tension. <clears throat> Six for it. That's too deep, that's too deep. Take, take a, little, a little bit wider with your stance. Just take a little step up. Turn your toes out a little bit more. Now shoot your hips back. Yeah, there you go. Okay, you don't have to work on it. Okay, rack. That's all right. See, that's a little unnatural for Mark, but we'll work through it. Watch. I can tell that's what we're still my back. Don't, don't, uh, when we're, well, your muscles are trying to work a certain way. When we're done, let me teach him how to box. Watch. That way we don't change it out. But I'll fix all the I just need a minute to find my Christina Aguilera, man. And then we'll be good. Alright. To do it right, I gotta take you all the way down okay. to like 135, maybe the bar. I don't want to start teaching here, okay. but you may as well get all the work you can. Just stay out of any so, knee. So squat, squat that I normally would. Yeah, but just okay. making a weight that doesn't bother your knees, doesn't bother your back. Okay. This bar is a little different than the one you have because the handles are lower on yours, so you maybe play around with your where you're holding a little bit. Okay. to do here with Mark is he's just going to continue to do some working sets and then we're going to go back down and do box squats. The box will keep him at a certain depth so he doesn't go too low and put too much on his lower back and it'll enable him to keep his torso a little more erect. So kind of back to the basics. It's, it's how powerlifters is how you learn how to squat when you're powerless. But mechanically It'll be better for Mark at this point mechanically. I'd like to see what your normal squat is anyhow. <coughs> 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 It's ugly, but it, but it feels good. <laughs> hey, we all have our little... I mean, the most important thing is I'm looking at the knee traction, which is real bad. But your bar goes straight up and down, and that's the most important thing. That's the cue that I look at is what's going on with the bar. Because if the bar goes forward, obviously it's throwing it forward on your back. If it falls back, it's throwing it back onto your um, psoas and everything else. This one's straight up and down. So it's just a matter of how do we figure this out with your without screwing your knees all to hell because okay. they're tracking so far forward. Okay. So it's not that bad. Um, 315, 
in uh, five paints. Come on. Come on. Let's go. All right, come on, let's go. Come on. There you go, come on. Up. Come on. Up. 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 Chain. Quarter off. Chains. I took the chains and the quarter off.
I saw Pac-Man. <laughs> I am the Roadrunner. I ran right over your ass. Now, we're only taking small jumps. So, you can't, you can't blow your, blow everything the first set. You know what I mean? All Leave right. a couple reps in the tank when you ride. All right. Just listen to me. All right. You can. You won't be able to get any reps to see. Tell you the racket, even if you feel good, the racket. 
maximum contractile force, which, which means a lot of mechanical tension. And then the pump sets, you are undergoing, in this case, severe metabolic stress. Metabolic stress also equals muscle growth. That's why we hit the whole spectrum of muscle fibers. Low reps, high reps, we hit it all. And it's still burning like fire from my set three minutes ago. Oh. 